In this video, we're going to hit the road looking for abandoned or distressed properties. This is a step-by-step -step guide for driving for dollars. I'm not in the mood, but you'll be here soon. viewers my name is Eric Pinkney owner of Pinkney Estates if this is our first time meeting please consider subscribing to my channel for weekly real estate investing content before we hit the road we're going to go over the things that we're looking for in an abandoned or distressed property an outdated roof a poorly maintained yard such as overgrown grass or trash all over the yard a couple of dead giveaways for windows are no curtains and blinds, and boarded windows, overstuffed mailboxes, and a pile of newspapers in the driveway. Now sometimes you will see papers taped to the front door. More than likely that property is a foreclosure. I personally stay away from foreclosures because I like dealing one-on-one -on -one with the owner. I like to keep it simple. Now that we know what we're looking for, let's go through the steps make sure you have at least a half a tank of gas when driving for dollars. You may be on the road for at least an hour. We are good on gas. Step two, have a heading. From your target area or your home, create a square mile radius and drive through every neighborhood. Now we are ready to roll. Buckle up. When looking for distressed properties, you want to go through an established neighborhood, not something that's brand new or new construction. You want a seasoned neighborhood. Okay, now pulling up to this property right here, I'm gonna give you some examples of what we're looking for. Okay. I am not going to go onto the property because I can see everything from here. There's some tall grass. Okay, and then there's a huge tarp over the roof of this home. Okay, so that tells me that the roof is in bad shape. And you have a car with a tarp over it. If you look at this property, you can tell that it is abandoned. Again, I'm not going to walk up to the property door and knock and come across a squatter or anything like that. So I'm just going to capture the address. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my maps, pinpoint my location, and then screenshot the address. And this is 145 Windsor Circle, Chapel Hill, North Carolina three minutes from my house. I'm telling you, every time I drive, I find an abandoned house. Once you learn these techniques, you will never drive the same. Okay, we are in another established neighborhood in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And here, this is a vacant property also. Now, the grass looks like it's well-maintained, but if you look closely, there are no blinds or curtains in the windows. Remember that dead giveaway I was talking about. I am on the road, as you can see. My car is right there, not parked on the property again. Here we go. Now, looking at the side windows, no blinds, no curtains. You can see inside from here. Okay, the siding is a little dirty and a little damaged, but nothing too major. Okay, and the backyard has a bunch of crap on the deck, like a refrigerator. Uh, it looks like a mini fridge over there. The deck needs a little bit of work, but this is a great prospect. Quick tip, 
when you are getting pictures and getting information about these properties, you want to get your information as quickly as possible. You want to be in and out, especially for people of color. I mean, that goes without saying, right? They call the police on us all the time. If you hang around too long, neighbors may get suspicious and then they'll call the fuzz on you. We don't want that, right? Step five, after you have the target address, go to the subject property's county website to find the owner's name and address. Google tax records for that property's county. I am located here in Orange County, North Carolina. So I have the property already pulled up and here under ownership information, it says Dan and Rebecca Carnes. Now it has their mailing address the same as the subject address. So I know that's not true uh, because there are no signs of uh, people occupying this property. So when you run into a speed bump like that, you want to go to whitepages.com and then go to people search and then put in Dan Carnes and I'm gonna put North Carolina because I'm not sure what city he resides in. Dan A. Carnes, okay. And then you have a Daniel David Carnes. Now, if you have multiple people popping up with the same name, all you got to do is go back to the county's website and pull up the deed and then look at the owner's name here. So it says Dan Allen Carnes and wife, Rebecca Ward Carnes. I'm looking for Dan A. Carnes, okay? So this is that person here. Now you don't wanna click the very first thing that pops up because this is an advertisement for White Pages Premium. So if you click that right there, they're gonna charge you a fee. So don't be fooled by that. Just scroll down a little bit more and booyah, there you go. So. Dan A. Carnes says Chapel Hill, other locations, Charlotte, North Carolina, and there's his wife, Rebecca Ward Carnes. You click that profile. All right, scroll on down just a little bit, and there you go. Now I have two phone numbers for Dan and Rebecca Carnes. Now I'm gonna look up Rebecca Carnes to see if there is any additional information that will pop up. And I'm looking for Rebecca W. Carnes. Go back to the deed. There you go, Rebecca Ward Carnes. And scroll down just a bit. And there she goes. And she's married to Dan A. So click on her profile. Okay, and it looks like it's the same numbers. Now, in Dan's profile, it had 145 Windsor Circle. Now in her profile, it has 311 East Main Street in Carborough, North Carolina. And that's right next door to Chapel Hill. So now I have their phone numbers and address. Step six, contact the owner using one of these methods. Number one, knock on the door. The property owner's home address is listed in the tax records or white pages. So if you're feeling bold enough, pull up. Number two, whitepages.com. Now I just broke down how to do a reverse lookup. Three, send a postcard. I like print.com for this option. If you have not seen my direct mailing absentee property owners video, the link is in the description below. Number four, skip trace. Skip tracing is a way to locate property owner's name, current address, phone number, email address, and sometimes their social media files. There are many skip tracing companies out there, but I like to use PIN by Connected Investors. It's time for the toasty tip of the day. Toasty! You have an owner on the phone, but you don't know what to say. No worries, I got you. In the link below, there are motivated seller scripts for you to follow. You're welcome. That concludes this week's video. Thank you for tuning in.
Don't forget to like this video, smash that subscribe button, and share with your mom and them. See you guys next time. I'm weak under your grasp